Good evening and welcome to NTD UK News. I'm Stuart Lees and here are today's top stories. The Prime Minister met with German Chancellor Angela Merkel today to discuss travel restrictions, Northern Ireland and football crowds. Fans and players are getting ready for England's quarter-final clash with Ukraine on Saturday. And Hong Kongers fleeing their homeland to the UK are speaking out against threats from Beijing. In her final visit to the UK, German Chancellor Angela Merkel met with Prime Minister Boris Johnson at Chequers today. They discussed travel restrictions, the Northern Ireland Protocol and football crowds. And today's Eddie Aitken brings us this report. Prime Minister Boris Johnson hosted German Chancellor Angela Merkel at Chequers on Friday. It's Merkel's final trip to the UK as Chancellor. Officially, the meeting was aimed at deepening relations, but naturally COVID-19 was high in the agenda. Merkel says she is concerned about UEFA's decision to let more people into stadiums, including Wembley. The British government will make its decision, but I am worried and sceptical about whether this is good and not a bit much. Johnson says he did not plan to order a reduction in crowds. Uh, the, the position is, is very clear in the, in the UK, which is that we have certain events which we can put on in a very careful and controlled manner with, uh, with, with testing of everybody who goes there. Under a pilot scheme announced last week, crowd capacity at Wembley will be increased to more than 60,000 for the semi-finals and final of Euro 2020. They also discussed travel restrictions. Johnson argued that Britain's advanced vaccine programme should permit its citizens to travel more widely this year. Currently, Germany and other European countries imposed a 14-day quarantine on all UK arrivals, out of concern over the Indian variant. Merkel raised hopes. We are constantly reviewing the travel restrictions, and I assume that in the foreseeable future, those who have been vaccinated twice will be able to travel again. On Brexit, Merkel says she was optimistic that the three-month extension to the grace period for shipments of chilled meats to Northern Ireland would give enough time for a solution to be found. I personally believe that within the framework of this Northern Ireland protocol, we can find pragmatic solutions. In power since 2005, she plans to stand down after the September election. Eddie Aitken, NTD News. Fans and players alike are getting ready for England's quarter-final clash with Ukraine on Saturday. Gareth Southgate has many tough selection calls to make, but one name is a certainty on his team sheet. NTD's Eddie Aitken brings us the build-up. The England team are getting ready for their quarter-final clash on Saturday against Ukraine. Gareth Southgate will oversee England's training session at their Midlands base in the morning, before they fly to Rome in the afternoon. Southgate has plenty of selection decisions to make, but one name is a certainty on his team sheet, goalkeeper Jordan Pickford. Pickford has not conceded a goal in the tournament. Yeah, for me it's, it's very good and it's, it's really nice, but it's not just me, you know, it's a, it's a full 11 and um, everyone's working hard to keep them clean sheets because you know, tournament football, clean sheets are key. Um, and they just give us a basis of keeping clean sheets will keep us progressing and give the lads up front the opportunity to go and score goals. Pickford was crucial in the 2 0 win over Germany at Wembley on Tuesday. He made a fine save of a Kai Halvert's shot, and his expert positioning meant Thomas Muller missed a great chance to equalise. Beating Germany was a massive game for us as a nation and massive game for us in the tournament football base. Um, then we just need to be on our way game come Saturday against Ukraine. We know it's going to be a tough game. Every, every game's tough, so um, we'll be ready for Ukraine on Saturday. As part of their post-match recovery, the team enjoyed a round of volleyball in the pool at their base. England fans are getting ready for the match too. In an estate in south-east London, residents of a block of flats have decked out their whole estate with more than 400 England flags. The patriotic makeover is a tradition that started in 2012 and was the brainchild of three residents who paid for the flags themselves. Eddie Aiken, NTD News. 
Italy warns England football fans not to use travel loopholes to go to the quarter-final in Rome. The Italian ambassador says even if you have a ticket, that doesn't give you the right to go to the game. And today's Joanne Robson has the story. Italy warns England fans not to try to use travel restriction loopholes to sneak into the England-Ukraine match on Saturday. The Italian ambassador to the UK says only those who can prove they have observed five days of quarantine and have a post-quarantine negative test result will be allowed into the stadium. My, uh, my message is very clear. Don't go uh, to Italy uh, because you haven't got time to quarantine. And even if you've got a, a ticket uh, to go to the football match, then would not give you a right to go to the match. The ambassador says travellers who are transiting through Italy for less than 36 hours or visiting briefly for work reasons will not be permitted to enter the stadium. We will, uh, we will check them at the border. Um, uh, the, the our police borders uh, are going to be very strict on this. If you manage then to go to the stadium, even there at the stadium, they would like you to uh, prove that you have, you have been in Italy for more than five days, that you have, you have been observing a quarantine. The Italian Health Ministry website says anyone found to have ignored general quarantine rules faced the fine of up to £2,600. The UK reported nearly 28,000 new COVID cases on Thursday, but Italy registered less than 900. Joanne Robson, NTD News. The High Court ruled today that the government's policy of housing transgender women in female prisons is lawful, dismissing a legal challenge brought by a prisoner. Entity's Neil Woodrow brings us the details from the High Court. A claim against placing transgender people with a history of violence towards women into women's prisons has been dismissed here at the High Court. Lawyers for a female prisoner known only as FDJ argued back in March that accommodating trans women in female prisons exposes female prisoners to a risk of sexual assault. The Ministry of Justice policy currently allows prisoners to be housed according to the gender they identify as, as opposed to their biological sex. The MOJ defended the policy stating it facilitates the rights of transgender people to live in and as their acquired gender. FDJ's claim was concerned with transgender inmates who have been convicted of sexual or violent offences against women. It did not relate to all transgender women. The High Court, however, dismissed the claim. The female prisoner, FDJ, has expressed disappointment with the judgment. Neil Woodrow, NTD News. Haribo says it's struggling to get its sweets into UK shops because of a shortage of lorry drivers. The German firm says it's working on the issue. The Road Haulage Association says there's a shortfall of about 60,000 drivers. Because of driving tests not taking place during pandemic restrictions and uncertainty around working rights since Brexit. Tesco and Curry's PC World have also admitted facing a shortage of lorry drivers. Solutions put forward by the industry to Boris Johnson include reviewing immigration policy to add drivers to the skilled workers list. And in other news, prominent pro-democracy activists from Hong Kong like Nathan Law have fled to the UK since a sweeping national security law was imposed on the former British colony. One year on, he joins protesters in London and continues to call for freedoms in his homeland. Here's NTD's Jane Well with more. Hong Kongers fleeing their homeland to the UK are speaking out against threats from Beijing. And we are here to try to make an impact, not only to save Hong Kong, but the world from the threat and the aggression of the Chinese Communist Party. I'm here already for a year. I gained my asylum status in April. And from the very beginning, I've always said that my arrival is an alarming signal to the UK community. Because given that I was a protest leader, I was an elected parliamentarian, I was a political prisoner, and for now I'm an exile activist, my story alone could tell the deterioration of Hong Kong's freedom and democratic system. He told us the spirit of Hong Kong will live on. 
Well, I have no doubt that Hong Kong people will, will keep fighting. Uh, we're a growing community, and that community will inherit the spirit of Hong Kong protest and continue to fight for our freedom um, from from where, our, from where we are. So I think that that will definitely continue, and we will not give up. July 1st marks one year since the Chinese state imposed a draconian national security law in Hong Kong. There's been a weekly protest since then. Kalam Ka and Salvador organises and takes part in the protests that call for freedoms in Hong Kong and other countries. I can't speak for Hong Kong. I'm not from Hong Kong and I'm not from China. But I know that what is happening is not right. It's unjust. It's a crackdown on democracy. It's a crackdown on freedoms. So we can't accept it. We can't accept it today and we can't accept it in 10 years. I hope that in 10 years this situation will be solved. I hope that by then, you know, we will see freedoms, we will see democracy in Hong Kong, in mainland China and in most parts of the world. If it's not the case, you can find us here every Friday, sometimes on Thursdays, protesting in front of the Chinese embassy. So I think this is really when Hong Kongers have showed us all over the world that they are doing every single thing they can. They're making the greatest sacrifices of all, risking life in prison, if not worse, for democracy. So it's time for the world to stand together because now it's Hong Kong, what is next? Human rights activist Luke de Pulford, who works closely with UK MPs, called on protesters to put more pressure on the UK government to hold the Chinese Communist Party to account for its human rights atrocities. If you harness the power, the energy of Hong Kongers, you put that together with the power, the energy, the witness, the authenticity of Uyghurs, of Tibetans, of Inner Mongolians, of Falun Gong practitioners, you will have an irresistible force. That's my appeal to you today. And standing together with people like us who are working at the front line within Parliament to try to change the UK's approach, we will achieve a change. And you will end up in a situation where the UK is at least, at least holding China to account for what they have done to you, to your friends, to your families, to your way of life, to your autonomy in Hong Kong. Thank you. While the UK has offered a path to citizenship to five million Hong Kongers, the Chancellor recently called for the City of London to have closer economic ties with Beijing. Jane Werrell, NTD News, London. British and Dutch warships that were at the centre of a spat with Russia in the Black Sea passed through the Bosporus Strait today on the way to the Mediterranean Sea. In June, Russia said British warship HMS Defender illegally entered its territorial waters near Crimea. In response, Russia summoned the UK ambassador in Moscow for a formal diplomatic scolding. In a separate incident, the Netherlands said earlier this week Russian fighter jets harassed a Dutch Navy frigate sailing near Crimea, conducting mock attacks and jamming communication systems. Russia considers Crimea part of its territory, but the peninsula is still widely recognized as part of Ukraine. And in other news, entrepreneur Richard Branson will travel to the edge of space on Virgin Galactic's test flight on 11th of July, beating out another billionaire with astronaut aspirations, Jeff Bezos. Eve Johnson reports. There's a new favorite to win the race for first billionaire in space. Virgin Galactic announced Thursday that founder Richard Branson would be blasting off aboard its test flight on July 11th. That's nine days ahead of Branson's big competition, Amazon's Jeff Bezos and his rival space tourism venture Blue Origin. It's the fourth crewed mission by Virgin Galactic, but the first to carry a full crew, including Branson, two pilots, and three other specialists. The launch will take them to the edge of space. Beyond the Earth's atmosphere, passengers will be able to experience a few minutes of weightlessness. A successful flight would mark a key milestone for an ambitious new industry hoping to go mainstream. In a statement, Branson said that private commercial space flight is, quote, set to open space to humankind and change the world for good. After two more test flights, Virgin says it will throw open the hatch to welcome tourists in 2022. The billionaire race to space also includes SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk. Musk has not set a date for his space flight. 
One of the UK's rarest butterfly species has been found at a woodland site in Kent. The heath fritillary was on the brink of extinction after this ancient woodland was destroyed over 50 years ago. In 2004, the Woodland Trust acquired the land and launched a restoration project. The Trust says the return of this rare butterfly is a wonderful result of decades of hard work to restore the site to its former glory. Still to come, protesters in Paris were joined by members of Parliament calling on France to acknowledge what they called genocide against Uyghurs in China. That and more when we return. Thank you for watching our daily news show on YouTube. You can also watch our other programming on channel 190 on Sky TV or on Freeview via Channel Box on channel 271. In the meantime though, please give this video a like and hit subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.